Here is number seven, adding a sound wall to your classroom. Now this is a very popular topic today. Uh, why are some teachers throwing away their word walls and adding a sound wall? Why would they be doing that? Uh, so one of the easiest ways to force kids to look at sounds first is to put up a sound wall. When you put, when I put one up in my room, I really wasn't sure what I was doing, but it forced me to learn more about the sounds and the articulation of. But just having one up in your room really forces the kids to look at it and refer to it. So just put one up and try it. Uh, we all know about word walls because we probably all had one. But when you step back and you consider the science behind um, you know, how our brain learns how to read, putting words under a word wall with under the first letter doesn't really make sense or really help beginning readers. For instance, would you put the word the under the letter T? Or would you put it under a digraph, TH? Or think about the words over and one. Would you put them both under the letter O? I always think of a kid writing a story and trying to figure out how to spell the word one. Um, would they know to look at the O if they have a word wall or are they going to look at a W? So that's something to think about too. I, I found having a sound wall very useful this year because it really forced my students to look at the sound and connect it with the letter spelling. Now this is a picture of my vowel valley here. Um, there's a lot of different variations um, of this. Um, oh, here it is. So here's one with the lips. So this one though cost me $2 from Teachers Pay Teachers. There's a lot of different options that you can add pictures of the mouth showing the lips of the articulation practice. Um, over here at this great site, Teacher Tools for Reading, you can check out sound walls and let's see here. Dr. Mary Dahlgren, she's, she's a great presenter to listen to about uh, sound walls. Then if you go to products, got some mirrors here. Like I, I have this mirror, you know, that I could use, but little ones for all the kids to have, I think would be pretty powerful. Um, it also has other resources. They have kid lips here, um, or this has the kid lips along with the mirrors. This is just the lips. So I've also seen teachers take pictures of their own class and, and use their own uh, classes lips. I think that would be pretty neat too. Um, I'm going to also leave all these links, but this one right here, I just think it's so amazing that these educators are just putting out these resources, you know, generously to just to share. Um, this is one that is just an incredible place to find, learn about sound walls. It goes step by step talks about all the different kinds of sounds and stops and nasals and then glides, liquids. Then it talks a little bit about a vowel valley, gives sound wall examples, talks about classroom uses, just a, a great resource. I'm also gonna leave this link. Um, this is a really good webinar by Don Garnum. So where in the mouth are happening? Is it happening in the- She talks a lot about it and it's very direct very practical that's why i really like that um, this is another site um, again mary dahlgren and she goes step by step and has lots of pictures of it in action and how to set it up um, and then i'll leave stephanie staller's work she explains sound walls and she has some questions that you can really reflect and think about as well throughout it. So yeah, so every classroom should have a sound wall because it just makes sense.